Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Some Dungeon Guy, and today we're starting our Wonder Draft mapping tutorial, part one, all about land creation, where we're going to walk you through the process of how to use Wonder Draft and how to create your first land. As always, if you like what you're watching, go ahead and hit that like button. If you want to see more role playing content, go ahead and hit subscribe and leave us some comments so we know what we're doing right or wrong. Let's get into it. Alrighty folks, today we're doing part one of our Wonder Draft tutorial series, okay? So we're going to split this up into several portions. Uh, today's main lesson is going to be about the actual app itself, as well as the land generation process, okay? So you can create and edit your land. Definitely the first step I like to go with. Um, inside of the main Wonder Draft options, you have your menu, which is going to let you open files, uh, save what you've currently got. You can change the size of your map, okay? You can create a detailed map, your actual preferences for the application itself. Uh, it's going to give you open your user folder, manual online, some community links, uh, premium art packs, which are things you can go in and purchase, um, extract map data, and repackage map data. Okay, and that's going to deal with the actual uh, things you have already created. Okay, but for now, we're doing the basics. We're going to go ahead and start a new map. Now, it's going to give you tons of different size options. You can edit these to whatever you'd like. All right, if you want to make these two numbers not stay consistent with one another, you can uh, unclick this maintain aspect ratio and change these to whatever shape you want, uh, as long as it is in the four sided uh, variety, meaning you can have a long, a uh, long map, you can have a perfectly square map, etc. Inside of here, we're going to have some templates. Now, these are the various resolutions and basic sizes. Okay, so for example, this uh, full HD 1080p, which I typically use uh, for maps I'm going to use just in my game, it's going to give you 1920 by 1080, your basic 1080p resolution. 4K is obviously going to give you the 4K. And these A2 through 6s, I'm going to pop up a graphic on the screen, and that's going to show you sort of a, what those dimensions mean. And these 300 DPI are going to be very high definition in case you want to print them out at a later date. Okay, US letter is going to be just that. It's, and then, of course, we have the uh, equirectangular uh, 4K. Okay, so today we're just going to start uh, with 1080p. You can choose portrait or landscape, which changes the dimensions up top. Landscape's gonna give you the wider version of a map, and then your themes, okay? So it's gonna give you nine different themes. I'm also gonna pop up a graphic here, giving you an example of what those nine themes look like. Basically, they're an entry level color and uh, basic theme, okay? It's gonna give you different fonts. Um, it's gonna have a different color palette already pre-selected for you. You can change all these things later down the road, but the graphic should show you kind of what the nine basic ones look like. Now today we're going to use Warren. Uh, it's just one of the ones I like. Certainly feel free to change it to whichever you like. And you can change this theme throughout your map making process if you decide that's not how you want it to go. Okay. Clicking OK. It's going to go ahead and get us a map generated. All right. Inside of here, you're going to see your basic map. Okay. Now a couple hotkeys. I'm going to go ahead and tell you right off. The mouse, the mouse middle button scroll forward and backward is going to change your brush size. And if you hold down control and use that middle mouse scroll, it's going to let you zoom in and out of your map. Okay. Holding down the middle mouse button will let you pan your map around so you can move it. Okay. Those are the hotkeys I use the most because those are by far the most functional. And some of the other hotkeys are sort of odd places on the keyboard. Okay. So options up above, we've got new, of course, it's going to make a new map. Open is going to open a previous one. Save is going to save. Import is going to import, like see it says import height map. You can import parts of your map, which is a little bit more complicated. And we'll get into that. Uh, export. And once you export, um, it's going to give you some different choices. Normal is going to export exactly what you see here on your map making page. Two times upscale is going to generate it at twice the resolution, so a bigger map. Multiplane is going to export just the land masses, okay? And that's really useful if you, for example, if you make a you know a set of islands that you really like, you can export just the land masses and you can import those into another map. So you can kind of make some detailed versions here import it into another map and have those islands ready to go. Height map is going to generate a different layer, uh, six different layers for water, for uh, assets, for the land and so forth, but it's going to generate a different save file for each one of those so that you can import each one into a different map. So 
again, you can sort of pull that into a map that you're already making, or if you specifically like, maybe you like one of your continents and you wanna make a larger version of your world, it allows you to import just parts that you like, okay? I'm sorry, so uh, we're gonna to go to theme. Now, this is gonna let you choose those nine themes that we talked about earlier. It defaults to adventure, but that's not the map we're on. Um, and you can choose whether or not to choose any of these uh, different textures okay so if some of these things you don't like which again for now we're going to keep them just like we have them uh, assets it's going to show you the different assets that are loaded into the program custom assets are ones that you have loaded in from yourself uh, by creating them or from third parties all right uh, undo redo pretty self-explanatory and of course your help menu okay on the right hand side, uh, it's gonna give you your toolbars for whatever tool you are using. For example, uh, right now it's on the uh, color brush tools, okay? Um, it's gonna give you some basic options. The water texture, you can change that even though you've already ch chosen it originally. So you can make the water and ground from two different theme packs. Um, the coastal FX distance is gonna be the little ripple around the, line, around the land, but we're gonna cover these here momentarily, all right? So we're in the land option. Now we have two big options. We can choose the land mass wizard, all right? And what this does is this is what allows you to generate an entire set of lands with the click of a button, all right? Following tool is going to be our uh, land mass brush. Okay, now this land mass brush does just that. It lets you draw a land mass. Okay, so you can fill in like if you want a certain shape or something. Um, and this is like your basis for how you're gonna make a map. All right, now notice that it does not give you rough realistic looking edges, which is something we're gonna edit. Um, we have the erase tool, which does just the opposite. It, it takes it away. Um, and of course, if you scroll that middle mouse button, you can increase the size of your brush uh, and so forth, okay? Now here's where uh, WonderDraft does stuff that other map making applications I've used do not. Now I like this function. The raised landmass tool, okay, it's gonna give you two different choices, your brush size and your roughness, okay? Roughness is just that. The more rough you have it, the more jagged what we're about to do is. Uh, so we're gonna start at the very bottom roughness, all right? So by clicking the left mouse button, it's gonna generate land, okay? Notice that that is basically a perfect circle. The more we make that rough, you can see it kind of comes up jagged. Now, you might, you might ask yourself, why would you want it to come up jagged? Well, watch this, run along this, and all of a sudden you have a realistic looking jagged coastline, okay? So I like to go through and paint most of my coastline so they don't look you know, super generic at things, right? So we can do that. The other good use for that is if you wanna make islands, right? Like you wanna make the Florida Keys, for example. Just like that, you can start making pretty realistic islands. The longer you hold it, the more land comes up from the ground. All right. And just like that, we're painting in islands. All right. Uh, the next tool we have is the lower landmass tool. By clicking on that, it does exactly the opposite. All right. So you can uh, shrink it back down into water. All right. And this raise and lower and this water level is going to become really important shortly. All right. So again, if you want. Uh, maybe you want marshlands or something. It's real nice. You can just kind of scatter through here and good way to make a swamp or uh, some wetlands, right? Or it's a good way to give your the edges of your map some texture, okay? Now, that's probably my favorite use of it. And then there is the land mass, or I'm sorry, the ground color brush, all right? That opens up some options on the right. Uh, the basic three brush types that you get, the first one is going to give you um, some... Uh, some softness to the edges so it helps blend colors um, the second one is going to give you a solid circle of color wherever you click on your brush and the third is going to give you a little bit of that cloudy texture to it all right brush size is exactly what it sounds like it rates, increases or decreases the size of your circle of paintbrush uh, and of course you can do that with the center mouse button scroll wheel as well uh, the next thing we've got there is brush opacity okay it's going to choose how dark or, or uh, how transparent your brush is. All the way to zero is gonna basically not put any paint down when you brush, all the way up to here, which is gonna make a solid color. Brush velocity is sort of the same thing. It's how fast it's gonna color it in, okay? We're gonna leave these how they came for now. We're gonna choose green, and you can see how my brush size sort of determines where it's gonna paint, and just like that, we got that cloudy texture, and if, especially if you go over it quick, see it sort of gives you uh, a little bit of texture around the edges and things, okay? Now, inside of that, we can use the 
soft brush and you can see here like the main part of your brush is going to be a little darker and it's going to fade out toward the edges and of course the solid circle now the solid circle if we click boom it's going to give you a solid circle of color okay uh, another thing we can do is if we choose the fill option boom it's going to fill all the land mass on the entire map with whatever color you have chosen okay so sort of the same thing if you hit the eraser button down here it's going to let you Un, uh, uncolorize it, alright? So, down here you've got some colors. Now you can choose manual color and that will let you choose any daggone color you want, alright? Once we, let's, even if we want to choose something kind of off the wall, some blue, again it's going to let us color it in blue. Especially good if you have certain factions that are going to be in certain regions and things. Uh, it gives you an option to make whatever color you like. Okay, turn that manual color back off. It's going to give you the four basic colors that, you know, sort of suggested colors. And say we color in our land, we'll fill. All right, and then if you want, for example, if you want to make, uh, you know, some some planes or something, you can sort of brush through, and now all of a sudden you have some planes. Or if you go along the edges, again, the longer you hold it, the darker the color you have gets. If you swipe it kind of quick, you can barely tell. But if you hold it down, it's going to darken that up to whatever color. Really good for beaches and things and so forth. Uh, we've got some white options in case you want some snow or some frosty patterns. Uh, and then just some other brown colors, um, especially good for darkening up either evil levels or, or evil layers or uh, around mountains and things like that. Now in here you can create new colors that you would like to blend in, right? So maybe you want your ground to be, you know, a more green color. Well, let's choose that. Hit OK. And just like that we now have a more vibrant green, all right? And then it saves that color down here for the time you are making the map, okay? So for now, we're gonna take that color away and we're gonna take the basic brush. We're gonna fill in all the land because we're gonna go back in and do some details later, okay? Now, next thing we've got is the land mass of polyagonal lasso, all right? Sort of a tricky thing to use, but kind of good. Uh, it's gonna give us a couple options. So let's just pick a square. Now I'm left mouse button clicking to set the points of my shape. Uh, you can make it certainly multiple shapes and right click will finalize the shape, okay? That is now our shape. We can choose to fill it, which will fill it with land. Uh, we can go back in, let's say we select that again. Erase is gonna take that land away. If we want to make a shape inside, we can cut that and we can actually paste it somewhere else, okay? Hit enter and now we've pasted that to another location. This is especially handy, like if you like this island for example, uh, we're going to go and set it, we're going to cut it, and then we're going to paste it. Now once we paste it, we can put that island anywhere we'd like, just like that. Hit enter and now we can move an island. Specifically that is a great tool. Uh, especially if you want, let's say, matching islands, we can we can make several of the same. We can change the size, of course, inside of that. Hit enter, and now we have the same island. All right. So maybe you've made one you like. Maybe you want to just increase that size. Uh, as you saw, we can uh, actually go in and completely make that a different shape. Okay. Um, so those are your basic tools. All right. Up here, the only other options you get goes back to the coloring. Um, told you I was going to come back to these. So your water texture, your ground texture are the things you chose in your theme. That will change. Uh, basically, it's just going to change the color of your water and the uh, and the, the different textures inside of it as a standard. Again, you can go back in and color it all you'd like. Uh, ground texture is sort of the same thing. It's going to let you choose uh, from one of the other theme packs. Coastal FX distance. As we lower that, you can see the dis the coloring around the land mass is going to change size okay so be cautious about this really depends on what you want your map to look like i try to keep mine in the middle uh, land blend or outline blend same thing see it changes the borders of your land the vignette strength is going to just darken in that map so if you want that worn look or a dark map and so forth uh, you can sort of do that if you want your map to be super bright take it all the way down all right um, coastlines so this is going to give us sort of an irregular blend, just like that, sort of an odd pattern around the outside. Uniform is going to do just the opposite. It's going to make it perfectly straight. Uh, say uniform outline, that's just that. It makes just the outline uniform. Three tier, just going to sort of stagger the color so that it's more of a gradual uh, change. Hash is going to add, uh, it's kind of like it's a drawn on map. 
And then of course we have the dash pattern, okay? You can see the subtle differences here. We're going with a regular, I'm sorry, uniform blend, all right? So it's gonna give a system straight colors. Coastline color, sort of the same deal. You can see it's gonna let you choose the color of your coastline. Uh, if you want that to be brighter, you can obviously change it up or you can make it a little more subtle if you like. Land mass outline is just the same, but for the land, it's gonna let you choose that inside color, okay? Uh, you know, a lot of people like to keep it brown, but you know what? Do you, man, do what you like. All right, all right, next one is the freshwater color. Now, this has more to do with the color of lakes. Same thing as you did here, except it's gonna do it with lakes. All right. Okay, uh, by going back to the brush tool, sort of the same thing, it's gonna give you those options. And again, that freshwater outline color can be basically anything you want, but it's gonna color lakes specifically. The color grading is just that, it's gonna let you sort of change where those colors uh, take effect. Not an option beginners typically use, but again, let you change the overall color and shape. All right. So that is the basics of land generation, except that <laughs> the most useful tool that I have found in Wonderdraft is this land mass wizard. Okay. If you want a custom looking island or a continent or whatever, absolutely use the tools provided below. If you want a quick map and you're not quite sure what you want, hit the wizard. Okay, it's gonna give you tons of different choices. Things from like uniform, which is gonna sort of make it in the entire map, uh, sort of one uh, regular continent sort of look, uh, or regular landmass sort of look. Continent, for example, let me go ahead and generate. It's gonna give you just that. It's gonna give you a continent, all right? And you can make your own islands or whatever if you'd like. Arpilago, Arpilago. Uh, once we generate that, it's going to give you some smaller islands, okay? Again, when we talk about this lasso tool, copy those. You can export these as a multi-plane, so it's going to export just the actual landmass so that you can bring those back into a different map, and then you can copy-paste. You can shrink them, enlarge them. It's but for now, we're going to go ahead and generate, and let's get this next stage of the map going. So just some diff different styles. If we choose uniform, uh, and hit generate, boom, it's gonna give you a different type of map every single time you hit it, okay? Maybe you want a bay, for example, or whatever. Inside of here, you can still go in and you can still edit your land just like you could before. You can do, do all of the same functions, all right? However, you can also choose different roughnesses, okay? So we take that all the way down and you will notice that the map itself is a little more, a little more smooth. Take that roughness all the way up and boom, the pattern on the map is super rough, right? Not only just the edges, but obviously the actual land formation as well. Take that about halfway, regenerate. Details gonna do sort of the same thing. Once you generate, uh, it's gonna give you no small details, so it's gonna take away all that edging. Uh, lots of details, the opposite. It's going to give you a whole bunch of detailed trim, all right? Again, keep that half for now, uh, regenerate. Okay, so kind of not a bad map. And then let's say you find a map type that you like. Okay, again, maybe I wanted a bay, so here's where we are. Now, we can change the water level, all right? So if you're close to, like, man, I really want some more land, drop that water level down, just like it's dry enough, and it's gonna generate a little bit differently, okay? If you like this, but you're like, man, I really kind of wanted it the other way around, your other option is to invert, and it's gonna do just the opposite. So if you get something that's almost what you like, okay? So from here, you then go in, we can raise and lower some land, okay? Give ourselves some, some small islands over on the side. And you can see how fairly quickly we can take this pre-generated land. It saves us all the trouble of getting all these edges uh, all nice and jagged, like, you know, maybe you want them. Uh, but there you go. That is pretty much the basics of how to use the land tool in Wonderdraft, all right? Well, folks, that should just wrap us up today. This is our first installment of our Wonder Draft tutorial series. If you like what you saw, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button to see more content. Leave us some comments below so we have an idea of what to make next and what you're interested in seeing. Definitely appreciate your time today. And as always, have a good day.